we now head into a technology presentation, Web3 for Bharat Opportunities and Challenges by Mr. Ashish Anand, CEO and co-founder of World. Mr. Ashish Anand is a serial entrepreneur and has over 18 years of experience in varied fields of finance, which includes debt syndication, CFO services, commodity finance, hedging, etc. Ashish started his first tech startup in 2016 when he was creating an open API platform for MSME lending in India. He also has more than six years of experience in the blockchain space. He co-founded Blockchain Advisory Council, a global platform of 100 plus blockchain professionals, techies, investment bankers, and domain experts, and has been, and has been a blockchain consultant to startups and established businesses across the globe. Ashish also sits on the advisory board of Social Pay USA and is a member of the Investment Advisory Committee of Bull Token Norway. Ashish conceptualized the idea of World and currently handles strategy, finance, and partnerships for World. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ashish Anand, CEO and co-founder, World. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here, and thanks, Alex, uh, to invite me and talk about something which has captured the imagination of the finance professionals across the globe in the last few years, but most recently in the last couple of years. And glad to be in company of uh, NBF Sage, who are actually, in my opinion, are more agile and adaptive towards new technologies than their larger peers, the banks. So with that, and without spending much of our time, I would just like to start the presentation, which essentially means Web3 for Bharat. And when we say Bharat, we all know that there is a digital divide, uh, and there is also a financial divide which exists in our country. So I'm not talk going to talk about India, which focuses a lot on cryptocurrency, which focuses a lot on wealth management. Uh, I would rather talk about how Web3 that is an umbrella term for blockchain and crypto and other associated technologies can impact lending businesses into this segment and especially in the financial inclusion segment. So before we start, uh, just a small intro about what we, are, who, what we do at World. We are an agri-fintech startup. Uh, we are actually speaking a fintech startup, the only fintech startup of India that runs 100% on blockchain rails. We are globally the second, and Asia is and Apex one and only asset-backed lending platform on blockchain, non-crypto blockchain I'm talking about here. And also, it's the globally the first application of blockchain in agriculture financing. There has been a lot of agriculture, in, lot of in, uh, blockchain applications in finance, in agriculture, but bringing agriculture finance on blockchain we did for the first time here and now the same model is being Santander Bank is entering into the same agri financing warehouse seed financing model on blockchain which we did here in India so they are taking it to Latin America and Europe and so on they have started the pilots on that uh, we have got some recognition uh, here in India across the globe as well and we will be talking about, before we go into Web3 for Bharat, let's look at how Web3 is being looked in India. And I would say it's a love and hate story. India is one of the largest users today and the, has the largest development force as well, software development force in the world. Globally, in terms of adoption of um, cryptocurrencies or Web3, India is on number two, taken into account all the factors like per capita income, et cetera. And it has been receiving a lot of interest nowadays, even from the, uh, from the investors. The data talks about itself that how we have seen that more than $6 billion at one point of time before the market crash was invested by Indians in Web3 space, in the cryptocurrency space. And last year, more than $100 million was invested by investors in Indian blockchain startups. So that's the story, but are our regulators on the same page? So in India, we typically, especially in the, when it comes to regulatory framework, whether the banking regulator, or the securities regulator, or our government of India, 
have two distinct ways of thinking. One is blockchain. Oh, we love it. Even our prime minister keeps talking about this technology all the time. But our RBI just started the CBDC pilot. But when it comes to crypto, especially uh, cryptocurrencies, virtual currencies, uh, we know that 90% uh, of the market has been destroyed by one single provision in the taxation law. So that's how it is. And that's why we will be focusing here on the uh, blockchain applications instead of the cryptocurrency side of the business. So talking about uh, Web3 for Bharat, which is the theme essentially speaking, how we can use, so the previous panel was about uh, from people from technology segment, sector into the, from the technology verticals overheading technology. And they talked a lot about how data can be used, et cetera, how technology can be used. So Web3 is the newest technology. And what it does is, I mean, when I say Web3 or blockchain, what it does is, it essentially helps create new paradigm of how we have done businesses so far. So far, we have done businesses in a very centralized fashion, especially since last 400 years or 500 years when the giant stock companies came into picture. And since then, we have seen the wave of centralization into businesses. Web3 is bringing the decentralization route back to uh, the businesses and that is creating new paradigm. How come? So for example, with the help of uh, Web3 solutions, it's possible today to connect across the globe, transfer money within seconds without that seven to 20% charges which we have to pay or maybe 3% here in India when we do remittances. Because of the peer-to-peer -peer based technologies and that opens up and also because of the peer-to-peer -peer decentralized nation and nature of the business, we have seen that instead of equity models, which was about shareholder uh, rewards, now the entire community, all the stakeholders can participate into the upside of the business through the mechanism called tokens. So what we see over here that in the financial sector, we see because cryptocurrency just started as wealth product, especially in many parts of the world. So wealth tech is one part which is going ahead. Tokens have become the new way of doing raising funds in, as capital instead of equities. And that's creating 100% new paradigm of crowdfunding, which we know as token raise, ICO, et cetera. Also, as I mentioned, it will have a large impact and already it has started. We saw that during the Russia-Ukraine war that even a country received donations from across the globe through cryptocurrency deals when there was no other possibility to do that, when the banking channels were not functioning normally. So that's the power of cryptocurrency because it connects the entire globe on a single platform and that is driven by people. It has not come from one entity. It is not a collaboration of governments. It has been driven from the grassroots. And that's the power. And that's where we see changing businesses in financial terms, in financial industry as well. But I would like to talk about more about the decentralized lending part of the business, the blockchain lending part of the business, in which we see three aspects really coming up. One is tokenized asset-backed loans. The second is decentralized finance. And the third is using tokenized assets and the decentralized finance to move money across the globe and create financial inclusion. These will be the three themes which blockchain lending will be driving and al already has started in last, uh, just uh, I was in November first week, I was in Singapore FinTech Festival and the MAS, the regulator, and JP Morgan did their transaction. A centralized bank did transaction on India's Polygon network on decentralized finance rails. So that's what is happening. It is, all these things have already started. And these will be the three focuses which we will be talking about in this talk show today. So before we go into that, I talked about tokenized asset lending. Uh, what it is, I will say better, more about it in a few minutes. But let me give you this prediction from SWIFT, the settlement body. 
that 24 trillion dollar of assets will be tokenized by 2025 just in three years rather 2020 is already over and second which we most of us know eight trillion dollar of credit gap across the globe and india has around 400 billion dollar uh, share out of that just in as sme space in the rural and agriculture lending the credit gap is actually unmeasured even in uh, as of today so those are the numbers which will be driving blockchain's adoption into financial inclusion through tokenized asset lending in decentralized finance and uh, what is decentralized finance before i go more it so we know what is centralized finance. We all are doing that. And we have sage banks. We receive money from one side. We give to someone else. But what if we are asked to go and move out of the picture? Can technology do our job? In many cases, yes, it can. Right? And that's where the data comes from blockchain, secures on blockchain, and the algos come from a smart contract. And when they come into picture, they connect people to people without need of a centralized entity to come over here. And that's called decentralized finance. Uh, looks like something which may not happen, but before the market crash, there was $200 billion in two years. Start 2020, uh, mid somewhere, uh, 2021 actually speaking, there was hardly $1 million of asset on decentralized finance. By 2022 January, we had reached $200 billion. Of course, with market crash, it has gone down. But it is still, just in two years' time, we can still say that it's a $50 billion industry that was created. And all grassroots without any central intervention. And what we are seeing, the banks like uh, uh, JP Morgan, banks like Santander, banks like uh, uh, society general all are moving over there and so this is the difference which is coming and so people here would say then are we going out of the business not necessarily you can adopt and that is what we say that c5 to d5 centralized finance to decentralized finance on blockchain rails is what is going to drive this market going ahead for next five years and uh, this is what i has talked about uh, that uh, it can help create a global open financial ecosystem where the money starts coming from those places where the yield is lower to places like emerging markets like India or Latin America or Africa where the yields are much higher. So far there are so many restrictions to do it effectively but DeFi rails solve all of this. So I talked about DeFi and all, but let me talk about what will be interest to this gathering is how can we use blockchain in our core businesses? So let me take a huge case of asset backed loans. I know that the world is moving towards cash flow backed loans, but still asset backed loans are a $4 trillion business only globally per annum. So we have a lot of work over there. Even in cash flow businesses, we tend to rely upon some sort of collateral, some sort of house, et cetera, as a collateral security additional, where all our challenges of asset-backed loans come into picture. So when we talk about asset-backed loans, and you guys will know better than I do, that we have three concerns. Whether the asset belongs to the person, so what is the chain of custody, what is provenance to that, who is the owner, whether there is any encumbrance of someone else onto that property or not, Secondly, will the property be with, with the lenders till the time the loan is there? And third, what is the value so that I can decide my LTV and give a loan? Because this in the time of uh, underwriting decides what will be my collection strategy and also because it is on blockchain where each and every data can be segregated separately and is immutable, its securitization becomes very easier. So for a non-blockchain lender versus a le blockchain lender, actually the blockchain lenders can command better uh, in yields in the securitization market because they can pinpoint the risky and non-risky assets and divide them separately. No 2008 here. So how does it work? Uh, me mechanism is very simple. We have to get parties on blockchain. Who are the parties? The lender, the borrower, of course, 
But other than that, we need the asset custodian or the title custodian. So an asset custodian, for example, in inventory finance, warehouse, uh, in mortgages, or any sort of uh, asset, uh, house property asset, registrar of properties. And all of them come onto the blockchain where the asset is, the physical asset is represented as a digital asset through non-fungible tokens. That is why we call it tokenization. The asset is put is into custody of a third party custodian and by virtue of putting it into the custody, we are able to create a digital twin of that, a digital version of that, which is the non-fungible token. It is non-fungible because it's, as we know, uh, assets are not typically, real world assets are not fungible. And that gives the benefit to you to give a loan and also verify the provenance without asking your a lawyer to go and check 30 year history, you can do that verification automatically here. Rather, the system will say what sort of uh, provenance exists, if there is any encumbrance or not. And because this is a non-fungible token, it gives liquidity to even illiquid assets like real estate. They become divided into thousands and hundreds of the parts and they can be traded. It means as a lender, your collection comes from that sales is if needed and you can do it easily on an electronic platform. And secondly, that you can do the life cycle lending on top of that. So we applied this into warehouse receipt finance, which is an agriculture supply chain financing where goods are put into warehouses and loan is given to farmers or agriculture traders, etc. And what we have been able to do with that by creating a blockchain network of banks, warehouses, verification agencies, and the farmers, we have created a paperless, personless ecosystem of lending against tokenized assets, which has actually helped solve a lot of, so this sector had a lot of billions of billions of dollars of fraud problem faced by the banks. And since the time we have started, we have zero default in last two years. This is the ecosystem we have developed, wherein we have solved the risk problem related to multiple lending, related to multiple encumbrances, related to not knowing whether the warehouse receipt is genuine or not, and added digital lending on top of that and brought the benefits, all of that to it. So that is where we applied it. We have run it successfully. And now, as I mentioned, this model is being taken to European and Latin American markets by Santander. We are also working with a few banks outside of India to bring it the solution outside of India as well. Here in India, we have created a network of 1400 warehouses with 2 million metric ton, 20 lakh uh, ton of storage capacity. Uh, we have received, uh, we have partnered with a few banks and BFCs, cooperative banks, and we have received credit line of more than 2000 crore rupees so far out of which we are slowly lending to the farmers and also venturing into different space, different entities. And this is a huge case in warehouse receipt finance. You can apply any asset backed loan with the same solution, whether it is loan against securities, inventory financing I already mentioned, receivable financing and so on. Any asset backed loan, the same principles, the same technology with the same benefits will be coming to you if we are deciding to go into that. So this is all from my side. Thanks a lot once again for the patient hearing. And if there are any questions, I will be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anand, for this insightful presentation. And if I may request Mr. Subhash Kilkar, Chief Technology and Digital Officer, ICICI Securities, to please join us on stage to present a small token of appreciation to Mr. Ashish Anand for his wonderful presentation. Can we have the magazine and the memento on stage, please? Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Mr. Ashish Anand, CEO and co-founder, World. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kilkar. Thank you so much, Mr. Anand.